so hello welcome back to another video now what are we up to today um recently here in guernsey we've had some really really great weather um, it's lovely and sunny today however there is quite a strong wind the water at the moment the clarity of the water is crystal clear and this time of year um, as far as the bass fishing goes it can be pretty tough a lot of the bass go offshore and um, you'll still pick them up from the shore but most of the time it is really hard work Recently I've had a few sessions here and there um, and a lot of people I know plus a lot of my, my close friends are also finding it really difficult so I've decided to do something a little different today. I've come out to target some wrasse. Um, it's fine weather, fine tides for it. We've got small tides at the moment. I'm going to be throwing some Texas rigs about with uh, some little soft plastic lures. Now with me today, I've literally just got here so uh, I need to set up my rod but I'm just going to be using 4,000 size reel, so Shimano Vanford 4,000, and I'm going to be using my travel rod. This is a uh, Abu Garcia Vendetta, five to 20 gram, um, and it's an eight foot long rod. So I haven't used this since I actually went to Cyprus. Now, as I said, I've got some Texas rigs with me today. They're the only things I'm going to be using. I've got some different weights on there that range from five gram to 20 gram. Um, and we're just going to be throwing it out in, in amongst the rough stuff, in between all the boulders and the weed, and seeing if we can pick out a wrasse or two. So, uh, yeah, I've not actually done too much fishing lately. The last couple of days I've been out twice, but before that um, I hadn't gone for a week or so. But as I said, it's been really quiet lately. Um, there's a few mackerel from the shore, but apart from that, there really doesn't seem to be too much. So I'm hoping we can hook into a couple of wrasse today. Um, be nice if we can find a big one. But I'm going to set myself up, get fishing, and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can find. So we've got the rod all set up now. As I said, four-piece travel rod, five to 20 gram. Now, it's actually an okay rod for this because you'll get a nice little fight from the wrasse. It's got a very sensitive tip. And as you can see, I've got the Texas rig on there. This is actually one of the fresh water lures I took to uh, Cyprus that I'm going to use for the wrasse over here now. I've got a size three hook on there. Um, and just this is made up of the trace is made up of 12 pound fluorocarbon i've got a uh i believe i think this is either 18 gram or 20 gram little bullet weight there a bead to protect the knot to the to the hook that's about three foot in length and that's just attached by a size eight barrel swivel and i'm using 20 pound braid on the reel so as you can see the water is crystal clear at the moment should be good for a ras today going to be chucking the lure straight into all this rough ground here close in hopefully we find a fish now don't know if the cast far here and it is really rough here so i'm going to try and bounce that as close to the bottom as possible but i don't want to get too too close because I've lost quite a few lures here in the past. You can see that lure working nicely in the water. Straight into the weed there. Come on, the wrasse. Well, there's a snag already. I'm just keeping the rod tip held high so I can feel as much as I can exactly what that lure is doing in the water. There's a little rash chasing it there, I can see it. Doubt he's gonna take that hook. It's literally only about six inches long, that one. Now I've got a few different color lures with me. Sometimes it can help just changing the color. Sometimes really bright works. Sometimes a darker lure is good. But first of all, you just got to get a few casts in and see what the fish want really. Ah, oh, that was close. Had that one on for a couple of seconds. Just a small one, but you come off. You could feel him have a tap as he was chasing it in. It was only on for a, literally two, two, three seconds. Now the only problem I will have today is I've only got one size of hook. So, uh, and they are quite big, they're two O's. It's only this rig, which is different, 
to the other rigs I've got. All the others have got 2.0 weedless hooks on, which sometimes can be, uh, when the smaller wrasse are being a bit finicky, they can be a bit of a pain to hook. There's a lot of small fish down there. Just little sort of about that size. Got a few of them chasing lure in now. Ah, oh, he come off again, no! Come on, come back. Ah, he's not following it. There we go. Hooks all, uh, the lure's all bent up. I tell you what, this rod's good for the wrasse because you feel absolutely anything. Let's chuck it back out there. Might just have to be patient and when you feel the first hit, just let the fish take it. It's just the only problem you get with that is if you give it just a second too longer or too much, sorry, it can take you into a snag. I just turned the camera off thinking it was off already. That was a cracking take. That's not a bad rust, that. But look how great that looks in the water. Now I just gotta be careful here because these rocks are pretty deadly. Oh. Look at that beauty, that's a nice fish. Let's see if we can guide him in here safely without harming him. There we go. That's a beautiful fish that. Well there we go. Check out that chunk. Lovely rass that probably about two and a half pound. That is a beautiful fish. Proper scrappers, these things. Give you a better show of him. There we go, taking that lure. So it'll unhook nicely. What a fantastic fish, great start. Let's get him back in the water. Right then. Easy does it, because I can feel him tensing up. So I'm just gonna very gently drop him in here and he'll just cruise about and find his way out. Great stuff that, Let's see if we can find another. Now you gotta love the hit of a wrasse. They hit so hard and then they just go thudder, thudder, thudder. You can feel everything through the rod. Well, that's no monster, but that's the kind of size we're looking for. The really, really small ones can be so finicky and unless you're equipped with the right size hooks, etc. They can be difficult to catch sometimes. It's not to say they won't take a big hook, but sometimes they can be a bit finicky and uh, a little awkward. That goes to show with wrasse fishing as well. You know, we've got a bright sunny day like this, the water's crystal clear, but you'll still find them very close in. As long as there's structure there, structure, shadow, boulders, weed, anything for them to hide out in, they'll still be very close into shore, so you, you never have to cast far. But they can be a lot of fun, Rass, especially when the other fishing isn't great. They're great fighters, and on sort of medium to light gear like this, you really get a bit of sport on your hands. 
Now, if you know there's big wrasse in the, in the vicinity of where you're fishing, I suggest you tighten your drag right up because, as I said, with that rough ground, if you give them any line... Oh, I thought that was a fish then. That was just weed. Yeah, if you give them any line, they'll swim under a boulder, swim round rocks, into weed. It can break you off. Pretty sure I got weed on the line here. Yeah. A little too close to the bottom. So I'm gonna head around the corner now and give it a little go there. That wind's picked up a little. It's blowing probably about, it's an easy force four, but it's gusting maybe 20 mile an hour, just over. So it's a bit annoying, you can only really cast in certain directions, but with fishing close in, it's not too much of a nuisance. Um, but I'm gonna head around the corner where I should get a little more shelter. And uh, as that tide's dropping, I'm gonna fish just basically, there's a reef, there's two reefs with a gully in between it. And I'm gonna try and get a lure right in between that gully and see if anything's in it. Now I've just changed lure and put just the tail end of a, uh, a gravity stick on, a bass lure. And the majority of the lures I use for rafts are all old bass lures that I cut down. Um, personally, I prefer paddle tails. I find you get a lot more feeling. Um, you can feel them, the sensitivity through the rod, and you can feel them working through the water more. However, the little worms work really, really well as well. And I actually have some, uh, some other freshwater lures that I took to Cyprus that I never ended up using. They're really thin. Um, I think they might be mollocks. Uh, from the brand Mollocks. I can't remember what they're called, but they're really thin, only about three inches long, with sort of silver flecks in them. So uh, I might try one of those as well. However, the hooks I've got might be a little bit too big. But yeah, let's go over there. We'll see if we can find some more fish. This could be an all right size one as well. Different color. That's another beautiful ras there. Don't know if you can see that in the water. What a hit again. I'll bring him up this way. Hopefully you can see that down there. That's amazing. Bass or ras, we don't care. Catching fish is catching fish. That's so cool. Check that out. Oh, scraping my rod. That's another lovely rust there. Probably about sort of the same size, a little bit smaller. I'd say that one was pushing two pound maybe. That's brilliant. Side of the mouth there. Lure out. And that's a lovely fish. Another lovely fish there. Now I'm not gonna waste too much time getting back in the water. Oh! Bit eager to get back, but lively. He's gone off already. I'll tell you what, that water temperature's rising because in the shallows here, that's actually a fairly nice temperature. So nice to hook into a couple of fish so far. Now, uh, I've actually just realized I've only bought one GoPro battery with me for this camera, um, which is a bit of an error on my part. So it's running on 30% battery at the moment, so I'm not gonna get too much life out of it. So I may have to switch to most of the footage on my chest cam. However, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to keep having a few casts in this area. That was only, I think, third or fourth cast in this little bit. So uh, yeah, there's another, uh, there's more ground to cover here. So. so we'll have a few more casts in this little bit and see if maybe we can find another one. Now that one actually took, I mean, I'm not casting that far, but quite far out. So got a good little scrap on that one. 
Now, as I said before, I know these rasps, the two that I've caught, are a little bit bigger. Well, much bigger than the ones that were following the lure. But once I feel them hit, I'm really letting them swallow that hook just to make sure that they're on properly. Because some... Oh, they, ah, that was a little one. But you can see there, if that comes back, I'll let it have it. But that was a smaller fish. That's how you know you've been hit by a wrasse. When the fish are small, like that one would have been, that just hit the lure, it really does pay to really, you can even lower the rod tip and just let it, let it really take the, uh, the lure because a lot of the times they'll just be hitting the tail. And this lure is fairly big to be completely honest with you. And the hooks I've got are also fairly big. So catching the smaller ones may prove a little difficult, but ideally it's the big ones we're after. Big six pounder be nice. Yep, there we go. I'm on. Boom. I'll let that one have it. Yes. It's a smaller, but where is it? Oh, it's quite deep. Oh, it's not that small, actually. That's another nice size wrasse. He's given up the fight. Whoa. Got a little one pounder there. There we go, lovely stuff. Out it comes, a lot smaller that one, but still brilliant. Well, I've just spent about three or four minutes getting that rass out from under a rock. As I picked it up, it fell out my hand into this rock pool down end, straight under that boulder. Let's get my hand right in there to get it back out again. But it's released back in the water now. So uh, yeah, are there any more rats about? We'll soon find out. So that other camera is down to 19% now. So I'm just gonna leave it off for a little bit. Do a bit of filming on this chest cam. Now it's half three. I'm gonna be leaving just before four o'clock. So enough time for a few more casts. Hopefully time for another fish. Now that weather's warming up and the water's warming up, I suppose. I mean, we do get wrasse all year round, like most of the UK. But I did find, I actually did go out a couple of times this winter and it was a struggle to catch them. So whether that's just, there's not, not as many or whether they've gone deeper out into deeper water or whether, I don't know, a lot more people are fishing for them now and keeping them as pot bait, etc. Well, hopefully the summer's going to bring a few in and hopefully a few big ones. Oh, it's shallow here now. The tide's dropped a fair bit. Just come back to where I started on the way back to the car. See if I can entice one of these smaller wrasse out. Well, that'll do it for today. Well, that's gonna do it for my little outing today. Now I'm gonna to have to make this quick because this battery's about to run out at any minute. But it's been a lot of fun hitting some wrasse um, in, this, in this weather. This is what summer fishing is about. So hopefully there's gonna be plenty more wrasse sessions throughout the summertime. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.